Now let us discuss about the multiple endocrine neoplasia, which is type 1. So what exactly is the MEN1 syndrome? The multiple endocrine neoplasia type 1 is also known as Wormer syndrome. And previously, it is also known as multiple endocrine adenomas and multiple endocrine adenomatosis. And this disease is an autosomal dominant and it is mainly associated with the pituitary adenomas, adrenal adenomas, pancreatic endocrine tumors, and hyperparathyroidism, which is always secondary to the parathyroid hyperplasia. So here, the four good carcinoids like bronchial, thymic, and the gastric, which are more commonly seen in men one. So if you talk about this, the mutation in the men one gene is located on the chromosome 11 and that is considered to be the main cause of men one syndrome and approximately one fourth of men one patients will have no family history of the disease and genetic testing for the men one gene not always positive for men one so here what exactly is a hallmark finding Men 1 is typically not diagnosed until patients are in their 40s. So the hallmark finding is hypercalcemia, which I already mentioned that is always secondary to the hyperparathyroidism. But however, patients are also frequently present with the signs and symptoms which are secondary to the pancreatic endocrine tumor and may have mildly elevated serum calcium. And typically, if you see this, Cutaneous angiofibromas and collagenomas can be extremely helpful and can be considered to be diagnostic clues within the setting of hypercalcemia or pancreatic endocrine tumors. And some patients, however, have few skin findings at the time of diagnosis. So if you see the typical presentation of MEN1, so MEN1 patients are strongly associated with zollinger ellison syndrome, which is gastrinoma. And this gastrinoma is often common, mainly at the duodenum. And in patients with both disorders, the diagnosis of the ZES, that is zollinger ellison syndrome, can precede the diagnosis of hyperparathyroidism and the initial diagnosis of MEN1 by many years and sometimes decades. And not only that, Malignant gastrinomas causing Zollinger Ellison syndrome are reported approximately in 20 to 70 percent of patients with MEN1. And here, the thymic carcinoid tumors can be aggressive, and patients can have a number of different uroendocrine tumors. And melanomas are the one which are also associated with MEN1, and menstrual irregularity and infertility can occur mainly secondary to the prolactinoma. So now let us talk about uh, the important points to look for for the diagnosis of multiple endocrine neoplasia, which is type 1. There are multiple focal angiofibromas or the most constant cutaneous sign reported to occur in approximately 90% of the patients of MEN1. And as you can see in this picture, these angiofibromas are small skin color to reddish brown as well as smooth uh, papules and they are often distributed over the nose as well as medial cheeks. In men 1, if you see, angiofibromas are more common at the vermilion border than they are in tuberous sclerosis. Not only that, the collagenomas in men 1 are multiple and smaller when compared to that of the typical larger plaque like Sjogren patch, that is the collagenomas which are seen in the tuberous sclerosis. And collagenomas can be one to two centimeters in size. And these collagenomas occur more than 60% or at the time of diagnosis, mainly in majority of the patients. And multiple gingival papules are also seen in men one. And mainly 
look for lipomas because lipomas are seen in approximately 10 to 40 percent of the patients associated with men one syndrome now let us concentrate on the tests which are associated with men one so if you talk about the tests testing is directed by the signs and symptoms always and mainly the laboratory findings are positive for the following that is serum calcium may be elevated which is mainly because of hyperparathyroidism so that's the reason pth will also be elevated and the fasting serum gastrin level is uh, greater than 130 that is when gi symptoms are prominent remember that rule out gastrinoma or vip oma and the fasting serum gastrin levels is greater than 130 if diarrhea is prominent an elevated secretin may suggest a gastrinoma. The diarrhea also suggests a VIP OMA. So check for elevated serum vasoactive intestinal peptide and the basal acid and the maximal acid output are especially elevated in the patients with Zollinger Elson syndrome as well as Men1. And mainly imagining to rule out the duodenal or a pancreatic gastrinoma. If weight gain or insulinoma is suspected, mainly look for hyperinsulinism and order an insulin to glucose ratio test. So next one is the gastrointestinal endoscopy is also the test which is performed in majority of the cases of men one syndromes. Not only that, prolactin levels will be elevated if there is a prolactinoma which is associated with men one and growth hormone can be elevated if there is a growth hormone producing adenoma and imaging can define the extent of the pancreatic tumor mainly which includes the abdominal ct scan and also somatostatin receptor scintigraphy mri and ultrasound of the liver ct scan of the chest abdomen and pelvis and also brain mri are indicated in men one now let us talk about what are the important management options which are available in men one patients often require long-term observation for the development of pituitary adenomas adrenal adenomas and the pancreatic endocrine tumors melanomas gastrinomas and many other tumors and the family screening is extremely warranted mainly to evaluate at risk family members and if vip oma or glucogonoma syndrome is present the management is typically facilitated by using the somatostatin analog that is octreotide which has a long acting formulation and also can be given monthly so there are large number of different mutations and genetic counseling should be sought before gene testing so one important point you have to note here that men too has neuromas on the lips as well as skeletal changes like long limbs similar to that of the marfan syndrome and men 2a also known as simple syndrome has also been associated with the nostalgia parasthetica and the cutaneous amyloid deposition and uh, one important point again i want to repeat over here that the men 2a is also known as sipple syndrome so what is the therapy which is indicated in men one parathyroidectomy is considered to be the treatment of choice in this therapy of choice you can say and it is often performed hormone access is treated according to the tumor type and ongoing surveillance and close follow-up in specialty clinics is required for all the patients suffering from multiple endocrine neoplasias so this is what you need to know about men one syndrome